Dan Kelly is perhaps a new name to a large percent of our audience tonight. However, if you grew up in the world of internet poker as I did, then Dan DJK123 Kelly is a very familiar name. And if there's one thing you know about him, it's that he's crazy, but in his own way, gloriously crazy. The thing about being regarded as a well-known crazy is that if you're smart, you'll adapt to your image and find ways to cash in on it. If you have an aggressive and bluff-happy reputation like Dan Kelly, then the adjustment you make is to go for value in some razor-thin situations because you anticipate your opponents are looking for excuses to call you. However, it's not an exact science. And against players like Sean that have an Check. aptitude for checking with Check. showdown value, Check. it can often result in doing okay. the betting for your opponent Check. and sending yourself on a one-way trip to value town. At the start of this blind versus blind hand, I call. Sean Jezieri limps ace five in the small, Check. and Dan checks his garbage 10-3 in the big. When the flop comes ace six eight and Sean checks, Dan fires his first bullet as a pure bluff. I call. Sean calls, and my assumption is that Dan intends to shut down unless his hand improves. Unfortunately for Dan, that's exactly what happens when a 10 hits on the turn, giving Dan second pair. Sean checks, and Dan now bets 175,000 for value, hoping to bleed some money off an eight or six and protect against hands holding one spade. Sean makes the call and gets the perfect card on the river, the ace of clubs. Sean checks again, and after considering his sizing, Dan bets 375,000. Dan makes this third barrel, which is a value bet, for three reasons. First of all, he thinks it's unlikely Sean has a better hand because many holdings with an ace would raise pre, and some percent of the time, Sean would bet the flop with an ace. Also, Dan knows that the rivered ace discounts the likelihood that Sean has an ace and is continuing with his read on the turn that Sean usually has an eight or six. Second, Dan also believes Sean would probably bet the flop with a flush draw, and that he's check called all the way to the end makes that holding pretty unlikely. Third, he knows due to his aggressive and bluffy image, it's more probable that an opponent makes a stand and calls him down light with a weak pair, particularly since it's hard for Dan to have an ace when he checks preflop as well. I call. And he's gonna make the crying call and win the pot with three aces. I believe that Dan's third barrel essentially boils down to a case of right idea at the wrong time. So Dan's play here, not so crazy. Dan himself, oh, he's still crazy.